This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or I'm learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. Now, if you saw my last video with the nitroethane, you'll know I need a, uh, a mechanical stir instead of a magnetic stir. Um, because magnetic stirs can only stir so much. They only have so much power. <laughs> Anyways, here's a couple examples of I or ideas I'm having about it. <clears throat> um, this is a blender when in the olden days. Now uh, this just comes out. And you can see there's two little divots to come out, and that's what makes it stick into the into the blender without flying out. If you can do that indentation with some pliers, you know, get some pliers, heat this up, and just squish it so that it's like that, you know what I mean? And then squish it on this side. And if you can do it exactly the right dimensions or whatever, you can use glass. Otherwise, you're kind of stuck with this particular piece right here. And you can see it's metal and it has some plastic on the bottom of it. Um, so the plastic might react also, you know, with like uh, hyd um, hydrocarbon solvents, you know what I mean? Benzene or something like that might dissolve it, you know. Um, Diethylether might dissolve it. DCM might dissolve it. The metal, you have to worry about acids and uh, maybe even bases that it's going to, you know, corrode it and react with it. Um, but there is that something... I don't know if it's uh, vinyl or PVC. It's a liquid. You see on a, on this tool how on the handles it has this, like, I don't know what that is. But they do that on a lot of tools or whatever. It helps insulate it in case you get electrocuted or something. And it probably helps, you know, if you're putting it on something hot. You know, this thermally helps resist that heat. They have a can that you can buy, and you just dip this into the can. Right, you open the can and there's a liquid stuff in there, you dip it in and then you let it dry and it'll put a coating of something on it. Maybe you could use that on this, um, you know, and dip this in so that it's, and let it dry and maybe it won't be reactive then. Or maybe you could use, because uh, the stir bars are coated with something there, it's coated with uh, Teflon. You can buy Teflon paint and uh, paint this you know, coat it with Teflon paint, and that might make it not be corrosive, all right? And you can see, I don't know, let me, uh, you can see this won't fit into the round bottom flask, but an Erlenmeyer flask <coughs> goes right in there, right? I don't know if you can put this on here. I see this little thing here. There's a little plastic thing. I guess you're supposed to hang your cup on it or whatever to hold it in place. You can cut that off, you know what I mean, with a hacksaw so that you can move your Erlenmeyer plastic over more. But look, it does work. You know, you can use a clamp like this over here. Clamp this up in position, and you can see, you know, I can turn it on. Another thing is, is um, let's say you wanted to use the round bottom flash, you can't get it in close enough, you know what I mean? It's too bulky. Uh, but what you can do is this pivots back and forth. And even when it's pivoted, it, you can still turn it on. Now watch, if I, let's say I had a different, you know, I ripped this plastic thing off and I can actually get it in there. I could come over here and you can see I have it clamped so that it's at an angle. And just put this at the angle. You can see it'll go right in there. Exactly. You can just turn it on. Okay. And you'd be able to get the round bottom flask um, to stir. These are nice if you can get, if you know someone that goes to garage sales or you go to garage sales, um, you can probably find one of these. I don't have any Teflon paint, so I'm trying to do stuff with what I have in the house. 
Um, this was my next idea. You can see I have this little cheap, it's a drill that doesn't even work. If you buy it, you're going to throw it away because it's garbage, okay? It won't unscrew anything like that. I mean, I've never used it, but I know it won't. <laughs> um, but check this out. All right, I don't know if you can see inside there or not. Let me, uh... Then it got the, has the gasket in here. It just barely, turn, I mean, it, it, I have some resistance when it, I'm pulling it up and down. You know what I mean? Um, but there is a gasket in there. See, these have, you have threads on there and threads on this red thing. And then the gasket's in there. And as you tighten it, it will squeeze that gasket even smaller. But it's just the perfect size for this glass rod I have. And what I did was, I started with a glass rod, right? I heated it up, and I got just a pair of pliers. And I bent over a piece, you know, about that much, bent it over. And then I heated that up, and then I just crimped it with this. Unfortunately, my pliers are really dirty and have a bunch of crap on them. I should have got some clean ones. Um, so it made it kind of black. So I just squished them. Squished it well, it was hot. and you can see I have a, like a leaf or whatever on the bottom of this. It's kind of black because my from my dirty um, pliers. Now that's even smaller than I needed. I actually would have had to flip this a, a second time and squeezed it so I could fan it out more. And because look, this piece here, look how much bigger it is. It's about a, it's about a millimeter bigger than the glass. And this has another millimeter to leeway when it's inside here. Just look, that's the fattest part. And look how much it moves back and forth. It's a pretty good bit. This is just for a thermometer thingy, this thing here. But it's good for hoses and for this. Um, and basically all I did was I taped this up at the, just like a drill bit, right? Taped it on there with electrical tape. And you'll see on the outlet, there's a, it's like for wrenches. See how it has that like uh, benzene type, you know, so you can put a wrench on it. Um, these stir rods are round. But what I did was I got some of this Teflon tape, which is just plumber's tape. It's, it's actually kind of. You know, it's that tape that you put on your threads of plumbing stuff so that it doesn't leak out water. I got some of that, and I put it on the end of this, right? I don't know if you can see it, but this part up here, the first four or five millimeters, is hexagonal now, even though it was round to begin with, because what I did was, I just smashed it in there until it went into it and it kind of made it into a hex, you know, a, uh, a hexagonal type thing, you know what I mean? Then this right here, I just tighten when I put it, when I put it on, I tighten it up and you can see it moves back and forth, but look at that. It'll stick if you put it in a certain spot. I mean, it's not... Sometimes, see how it slips down? Sometimes that's how it is. It's good enough to slip down if I jiggle it. Now this is that stir rod with the top. Remember the plastic part? And if I take the plastic part off, you'll see this black uh, gasket here. You can see it's nice and snug. I actually take some pressure, not a lot, but take some pressure to move it up and down. So this easily turns. You know what I mean? Um, but it's still snug. When it, and you saw when I had the weight of the glass on here, right, that holds, that you screw this to, and I wiggled it, this actually started to slide down from the weight. But you can tell, it doesn't matter how much I wiggle it, with no weight on it, it stays there in the same spot. So, 
it has a good enough leeway to uh, to be able to you know move. Now, is this good enough if you're refluxing something? You know what I mean, where you have a lot of vapor in the in the pot. I I don't know. You might have to have it make it longer by either weld them together with heat, a bunch of these stir rods, or just buy one long one. You know, or a tube that can fit, but it has to be the size of your drill bit. Um, or slightly smaller so you can, uh, you know, put some Teflon tape, tape on it, shove it in there, and then use some electrical tape to make sure it doesn't come out, right? And that way you can, and if you have a, uh, you know, some kind of um, ties, plastic ties or whatever you can clamp this on to say here so that you don't have to hold it right and put a twisty tie around the handle so that it just runs constantly and then you have that right there like I said that pin should be a lot bigger like at least three milliliters or two two or three millimeters um, it still doesn't make it that big, but the other Meyer flask, you can make it even bigger. You know what I mean? You can make it like an inch or whatever that is, an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half uh, wide. So anyways, that's it. That's my whatever. That's it right there. So this actually, I didn't realize how snug this was. It is more, it's like really snug. Um, if you threw some Vaseline on there, maybe this would be good um, to stir stuff even under reflux conditions. I don't know. Now keep in mind, if you are refluxing, you can have this long enough to go all the way down through the um, condenser, as long as it's a you know a uh, regular West type condenser or whatever you call the straight the straight condensers. That way, as it refluxes. The condenser will condense it out, and you won't need a gasket. And your, you know, your stir rod, it's, you can basically just think of this part right here as the condenser, you know what I mean? Just enlarge it. <clears throat> and when your stir rod <clears throat> came down all the way to the bottom there, it doesn't inter interfere with anything, you know what I mean? Because your condenser is just a tube, just like this is a tube. Um, if anything, it'll increase the efficiency. The efficiency of your condenser because it has more for the area now for the vapor to condense onto right and you could still have it turning because this is a cheap drill it's not like you know going out of control or whatever it's just but it's powerful it's powerful enough to turn any you know it doesn't matter how much solid is in there it's going to spin but it's not too powerful that that's all the power it has like you know what i mean in eight hours, I think you might uh, you might burn them out if you just constantly run them for eight hours. Now, another idea is to buy a drill press, <coughs> um, and you can use this to clamp on your um, you know your round bottom flask or whatever you're going to be using as a vessel. Um, this guy he actually built this, so he put a clamp there. I can actually take that off, you know, that platform there to get it out of the way. And it'd be ready for use. And then I could just put a uh, plug that into a. Uh, you see how I have that? It's just a plug, an extension cord, right? And I wired it up. You know, I cut the extension cord off, wired it up, so that it goes through the switch and then these plugs. Now I could, I should have made this into a dimmer switch. That would have been even better. You know what I mean? And then I can plug the drill into here, and I can use my dimmer switch so that it's not going so fast that it's unreal or whatever. Just put a twisty tie thing around the trigger of this drill, and you can see it's starting it up a little bit. See how I got the band on the trigger? Anyways, enjoy, have a great day, and always remember, science is great.